All right, hello and welcome back to the Broken Business Models Podcast. We're your hosts, Ryan and James. Before we get into today's podcast, just a quick disclaimer how we start each of these. Nothing in this podcast should be taken as investment advice. James and I could have positions in any of the companies that we mentioned in this podcast, and we, we may change our positions at any time with or without disclosing those changes. So make sure to do your own work and consult a professional before making any investment decision. So in today's podcast, we're going to be talking about a company called Joby Aviation, which is in the electric vertical takeoff and landing space. Uh, recently, their stock price has surged on the news that they have completed a uh, hydrogen powered uh, vehicle, uh, elect, uh, vertical takeoff and landing vehicle. Investors are very excited about this, but for reasons that we'll get into in this podcast, we don't think that it will be enough to change the uh, fundamentals of the company. So before we get straight into the Joby, uh, it's worth it to, it's probably worth it to recap briefly the eVTOL market. We've made, uh, we made several videos on this topic in the past, both on this channel and our, on our main channel about why we think the eVTOL market is unviable, at least in the sense that um, a lot of these companies and industry analysts are projecting. So there are a number of challenges, um, limited range and power, small capacity and undeveloped infrastructure, difficult unit economics, and finally the fierce competition within among the different companies in the eVTOL space. So the first challenge is the uh, limited range from a technical perspective of the eVTOL technologies. So eVTOLs like, like electric vehicles require large batteries and these electric batteries are extremely heavy, which is a very, very bad thing when you're trying to fly. Because of that, most eVTOLs can only carry about five or fewer passengers, and they can only fly for about less than 50 miles. So for example, in this here, Archer Aviation, which is one of the biggest eVTOL companies currently, um, this is their midnight, their midnight eVTOL, which only is designed to carry four passengers for about 20 mile trips. Because of this uh, limited range in power, the only real use case for uh, eVTOLs that may be viable is urban transportation. You know, think about transporting passengers from an airport to a city center. Um, other applications that normal, hel normal helicopters might have, like for military and police, uh, eVTOLs just don't have the range and power to do, the, do those. The second challenge is that the infrastructure needed for flying taxis is limited. So in, in that use case of flying people from airports to city centers, you need somewhere to land at the airport and at the city center. And currently there are only limited options in most cities for that. So for example, in New York, in New York City, um, you have to land at the Manhattan heliport, which only has about 12 spots. Um, for EV tolls to work at scale, you need to build a lot more of these heliports, which is difficult and needs city approval and things like that. Even if you were to figure out the uh, infrastructure challenge, the unit economics uh, will still be another challenge as well. Uh, currently, the landing cost to land at the Manhattan heliport is about $40 per person. So with four passengers plus the pilot, that comes out to like $200 uh, per, per EV tall. And also keep in mind that these heliports will be in high real estate cost areas in the city centers. So leasing costs will put a floor on, land, on landing costs, even at scale. Um, also, because there are only limited landing spots, chances are that the passengers will need to have a last leg taxi ride from the heliport itself to their final destination, which adds another expense to the entire uh, business use case. The one advantage is that electricity costs may be cheaper than regular helicopter fuel costs. But still, even with the, even with the electricity, there's there's trade-offs because uh, batteries don't last forever, and battery maintenance could end up being a huge expense as well. And finally, when you uh, consider for any one individual company in the EV tall space, there's fierce competition. So currently, there's there are hundreds of companies working on EV tall designs, and many of them have their have working prototypes that they're that they're currently developing. This includes all the way from startups like Joby Aviation to large corporations like Boeing. So um, for any individual company in the space, the competition is fierce. So that's a quick recap of uh, why we think the eVTOL space is challenging. Uh, so I'll, I'll hand it over to you, James, to talk about Joby. 
Yes. Um, so before we get into uh, talking about Jovi, uh, just a quick pause to um, remind everybody that we also have a website, differentiatedanalytics.com, uh, where we have a bunch of premium features, including our own um, original short selling research, uh, which we publish. Um, uh, we publish detailed write-ups about um, stocks that we are bearish on. So if you're interested in um, checking out our premium research and other investor resources, go to differentiatedanalytics.com. The link is in the description below. Um, and you can also lock in a 50% off discount when you use the discount code WSM50 at checkout. So if you're interested in um, you know, reading our short selling research and want to support the channel, uh, make sure to check that out. So now, um, you know, back to the topic of the presentation, which is uh, Jovi Aviation. So as Ryan mentioned earlier, uh, Jovi's stock price um, has surged by about 30% uh, just last week uh, when they announced um, that they had, uh, they have this new hydrogen powered aircraft, um, which they just did a test flight and they were able to fly 523 miles. Uh, so investors were clearly very excited about this and as Ryan, um, as Ryan previously was talking about the limitations of eVTOLs, one of the limitations is that uh, due to the, um, how heavy the batteries are, the eVTOLs have limited range. Now, with the hydrogen fuel, uh, Joby was able to get a much greater range than would be possible with um, battery electric um, and with just using a battery. So that's why investors are excited. You can have you know a 500 mile range with an eVTOL, uh, and that potentially would increase the number of use cases uh, for eVTOLs. But as we'll um, talk, as we'll dig down deeper, we don't think this is actually uh, these hydrogen eVTOLs are actually going to be um, economically viable. So here's um, a quote from the Joby Aviation CEO talking about um, the, recent the recent hydrogen eVTOL test flight that they just did. He said, imagine being able to fly from San Francisco to San Diego, Boston to Baltimore, or Nashville to New Orleans without the need to go to an airport and with no emissions except water. That world is closer than ever, and the progress we've made towards certifying the battery electric version of our aircraft Gives us great heads. Gives us a great head start as we look ahead to making hydrogen electric flight a reality. So he's saying it's so great because you can get you know from the distance between San Francisco and San Diego is about 500 miles, um, and that is within the range of their hydrogen electric aircraft. Uh, and so you could get from San Francisco to San Diego without the need to go to an airport. So on the surface, uh, you know that sounds like it could be uh, it could be a good use case. But uh, if we you know, dig down into the numbers, maybe it's actually not going to be a great use case. And the reason I think this is because um, air, um, air, air flight, you know, flying on a regular airplane, is already extremely cheap. So I just looked at Google Flights. And if you want to take a round trip from San Francisco to San Diego, uh, a round trip, the cheapest one is Frontier Airlines, only cost you $48. So air travel is already extremely cheap. Um, and the, you know, this Joby's hydrogen, um, hydrogen EV is all, it's still in its prototype phase. So obviously they, they have not published or said how much they're going to charge for the flights, but it's going to have to be, you know, significantly more expensive than, um, the current prices of airfare. And we can uh, get into why that is. So if we just look at the cost of hydrogen, um, so, Joby says that they had um, their hydrogen eVTOL has a 40 kilogram uh, fuel tank. So it has 40 kilograms of liquid hydrogen, and that allows it to fly uh, 500 miles. Now, uh, currently the, in California, the retail price of hydrogen is about $15 per kilogram. So if you do a round trip, because remember we're comparing this to the price of a round trip, um, you need to fill up the tank again to fly back. So you need 80 kilograms of hydrogen in total. At $15 per kilogram, the hydrogen is going to cost you $600. Now their aircraft has the capacity for four passengers. So if you divide 600 by four, the cost 
of the hydrogen is $150 per passenger, which is three times more expensive than a, a round trip ticket from Frontier. So in the, that's just the cost of the hydrogen alone, just three times the market, you know, three, three times the cost of flying on a regular airplane. And obviously there's way more expenses, you know, the cost of the uh, air, the eVTOL itself, the maintenance, the paying the pilots, the infrastructure, the corporate overhead, you know, there's a huge amount of additional costs in addition to just the hydrogen fuel, but just the hydrogen fuel alone is way too expensive to make this viable. Now, uh, you know, the bulls would argue, well, maybe it is, you know, Joby's aviation is going to be more expensive, but uh, you have the convenience of not needing to go to an airport and airports can be, you know, crowded, right? So maybe it takes a long time. Uh, you know, you have to get a taxi to go to the airport. Well, that's true, but you would also need a taxi to get to the heliport from wherever Joby takes off from. Because, you know, the Joby aircraft, it can't just fly to your, you know, backyard and pick you up. There's going to have to be a fixed, you know, heliport that you have to go to. Um, and if they actually achieve scale and are doing many flights, then that heliport could be just as congested as an airport. So their Joby is really trying to reinvent the wheel here uh, with you know this new hydrogen technology, but if you look at the economics of it, they're basically just making a more expensive version of something we already have. Um, so I don't really think it makes a lot of sense. You know why would you pay if just the fuel cost alone is one hundred fifty dollars for a round trip? You know adding all the other costs, they're probably going to have to charge like three four hundred dollars for a round trip. Well, why would you pay that if you can get if you go on Frontier, uh, a regular airplane, and pay fifty dollars, so it just doesn't doesn't make sense. So, if the hydrogen, uh, you know, EV tall is not going to be viable, what about the battery electric EV tolls? Um, and so, as Ryan alluded to uh, previously, the only uh, because of the short range, the only real use case uh, for the battery electric EV tall is for um, very short range urban traffic. For example, uh, flying from JFK airports to downtown Manhattan. Now, the thing is, this has already been tried before and it's been somewhat of a failure. So back in 2019, uh, Uber made something called the Uber Copter, uh, which was basically, uh, you know, this same business model. It'll take you from JFK to uh, downtown Manhattan using a traditional helicopter. So from memory, uh, the Uber Copter cost, I think, like $150, uh, which was significantly more expensive than a taxi or a regular Uber car. But the idea was it would be much faster because it can bypass traffic and the helicopter is much faster than a car. So instead of taking an hour to get to um, from JFK to, send to uh, downtown Manhattan, the idea was it would take you way less time, like only 10, 15 minutes. However, as it turns out, uh, using the Uber copter was actually slower than using a regular taxi. And the reason is, so say you, you, know, you fly into JFK, uh, the heliport is not right next to the airport. It's you know, a little, little ways away. So you have to get a, um, an Uber car to drive you from JFK to the heliport. And then at that heliport, you get into the helicopter, which will fly you to um, another heliport in Manhattan, and then from there, you'll have to get another Uber car uh, to your final destination. So because you're constrained by needing to take off and land at fixed heliports, it actually ends up, you have to take a three-leg journey. And it actually ends up taking even more time than would, you know, if you just got a taxi for the whole way. So after operating the uh, Uber copter for, you know, only about a year, Uber decided to uh, ax it. So they stopped offering this service because it wasn't viable. They were almost certainly losing money on it. Uh, they were just weren't providing a great value proposition to consumers because it was you know, way too expensive and it didn't even save time. So in uh, December of 2020, Uber sold uh, their air taxi business to Joby Aviation. Um, and then Joby Aviation, they say, okay, well, our um, EV tolls are better than helicopters. Um, so you know, we eventually, once we get certification for our EV tolls, we will be able to basically bring this business model back and then it'll somehow be viable. However, I am highly skeptical that uh, the EV tolls will be significantly better than a traditional helicopter. So the reason is there's a, um, you know, a small company called Blade Air Mobility, which went public by a SPAC a couple of years ago. And they offer, they currently offer a service that's very similar 
to Ubercopter. Uh, they use traditional helicopters to do short distance uh, you know, travel, um, and including in New York, they also have a JFK to Manhattan uh, route. And uh, they, Blade and Mobility is a tiny company. They're losing money, uh, and they're you know like a penny stock basically. Um, and they are using regular um, helicopters currently. They said that uh, once uh, EV tolls get approved by the FAA, they're going to transition their fleet away from uh, you know traditional uh, traditional helicopters um, and replace them with EV tolls. But according to Blade Air Mobility's uh, own investor presentation, they say that there's only going to be a modest uh, decrease in cost uh, with an EV tall versus a traditional helicopter. Uh, they claim that the EV tall is going to be, um, you know, cheaper to maintain, and the fuel is going to be cheaper. Uh, and so that's how they say it's going to be, um, you know, about 15ish percent, a uh, 15ish percent cheaper than a traditional helicopter. Now that's hardly a game changer, and it's important to note that you know Blade Air Mobility is not profitable; they're losing money. And you know the only other companies that I was doing this was Ubercopter, which was also a failure. So this uh, urban air mobility market uh, isn't really that good of a business to begin with. Uh, you know Uber tried it and failed. Uh, Blade Air Mobility um, is unprofitable and um, is you know a tiny; it's a penny stock. Uh, and then even they claim there's going to be only a modest improvement from EV tolls. So you're starting with a tiny, unprofitable market, and then you're going to make at best a modest improvement. You know, I, don't, I personally don't think that you know this is going to be viable. And then um, on the question of cash burn, so uh, Joby Aviation, they currently generate um, they're a pre-revenue company because they generate almost zero revenue because. They have not yet been approved by the FAA, so they haven't yet begun commercial operations. Uh, you know, they currently are burning cash at a rate of $1 million per quarter. Um, and that cash burn is likely to accelerate because they're planning to, you know, this year and next year, start ramping up production of their aircraft. So, you know, that $1 million, $100 million per quarter of cash burn is likely going to accelerate going forward. They have uh, about $900 million of cash and equivalents on their balance sheet, which is about two years worth of cash burn. Joby claims that they plan to uh, begin to get the FAA approval and begin commercial operations in 2025. Now, it's very much possible uh, that they achieve this um, because they are indeed very far along on the certification process. But given all of the um, all of the, the the problems that we talked about previously, you know, the fact that Ubercopter failed, the fact that Blade Air Mobility uh, is losing money. Uh, I personally doubt that um, when Joby begins their commercial operations, I personally doubt that this is going to be profitable for them. In fact, I believe that they're probably going to start losing even more money and the cash burn will probably accelerate uh, once they begin commercial operations because I don't think that this uh, business is viable. I think to me, um, the entire idea of this hydrogen development that Joby has, has come up with, you know, on the one hand for aviation, um, hydrogen makes a little bit more sense uh, because of the weight considerations. But at the same time, hydrogen is still a very, very new kind of technology for power. And it's extremely expensive compared to regular, regular fuels or even like battery electric. And so if you, if you think, if you look back to previous examples of companies that have tried to make hydrogen, uh, uh, into viable business models, like for example, Nikola, uh, it's never worked out. And combine that with the all the other challenges to the EV tall market, um, I think it just it just seems like uh, there's very 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 little chance that this can really be a game changer for Joby. All right, I think that um, wraps up pretty much everything we had to say uh, about Joby Aviation today. As always, um, if you have any thoughts or opinions about Joby or EV tolls in general, please let us know in the comments section below. And uh, we will see you all on next week's video.